What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and another GTR restoration video. Hope you guys have been having a good day and if not, well I hope this video can help you out a little bit. I do want to mention, I just want to say a quick thank you for all the support lately. The last couple of videos have done pretty well and um, I'm, just, I'm just excited that you guys are enjoying the content as well. So yeah, I just want to say thank you. Appreciate you guys tuning in today for a what I think is a really cool episode. You guys might be able to tell behind me that we, uh, we made a lot of progress today. We got some paint on the car a couple places and I'm really excited to show you guys what we got into. So without further ado, let's go ahead, let's hop into the content and I'll catch up with you guys at the end. Enjoy. First thing on my agenda today, if you guys recall from a few videos back, we actually worked on the other side in this exact same spot. Personally, I thought that side was pretty bad, but now looking at this side, it turns out this side is much worse. So for those new viewers, or for those who just have not been keeping up to date with the GTR restoration content, which I definitely recommend you guys check it out. So the quick steps, is just quick little info as to how I remove these panels, guys. All these panels from factory are just welded, they're called spot welded. So they have this machine essentially in the factory, you guys can see little circle drill holes. Just simple, just drill them out, it's very, very easy, you'll see them. And uh, that's how we remove these panels. Each panel is essentially just spot welded in from factory. Now you, all you have to do is just find out where it was attached from and how it was welded together. Drill out those welds and uh, it'll come off before you even know it. It will take a little bit of time. It's not the easiest thing in the world. You will need a few tools, but I can assure you that it's a, it's a fairly straightforward process. Just needs a little bit of time, a little bit of care, and you guys will be just fine. There's also a good chance that the seam sealer on your 30 year old vehicle is hard as a rock, as seen here. <laughs> Now just like the other side, I'm having to go ahead and remake this portion of the upper cowl as well. It's just really corroded through, the metal itself is very pitted and extremely thin uh, just from sitting and being rusted away and eaten away for how many years. So just a quick template, you guys see tape is my favorite template making tool. It's a very simple to use. I used to just use like a paper and just lay it over what I was doing and trace out the shape. But guys, paper's tricky, tape is great because it sticks. Once you lay it down, you can hold it, it holds its shape, everything is form fit. Definitely try tape if you guys have not tried it yet. It works out really well. So then obviously just map it out just as you normally would. Mark out where all your holes need to be and uh, make your markings. So essentially after that's done, my template is complete. I just pull it off. I then transfer that onto a sheet of metal. And before you know it, we have ourselves a replacement piece.
So with the second piece cut out of the way, you guys can now see just how much corrosion was happening in that bottom corner of the windshield area. It's pretty incredible. As you guys may have recalled from the beginning shots, it even was bleeding through from the inside. You could actually see the rust on the inside of the car. That's how bad it was. So what else is there to do besides remove it all, break it all down, clean it up, and build it all back even better. So you guys know the deal. Spot welds are our best friends. We're actually removing more panels on this side than I had to do on the other, simply because of the amount of corrosion. The other side I thought was quite bad. Now coming onto this side, it is a whole hell of a lot worse. But luckily, we got the tools, we got what we need to get everything all taken care of perfectly uh, to a, an, ex, an extremely high standard and uh, to a point where I'm extremely happy with and I know it's gonna last for many, many, many more years, much longer than it was originally intended for. So let's go ahead, let's kinda knock out these final few panels in this area, get everything all stripped off, start cleaning it up, and we'll throw some paint on here. But with masking tape back in hand, that can only mean one thing. So this portion actually was so far gone that I did not even feel comfortable to uh, actually just go ahead and do all of my repairs on top of it. So only option left to do at this point is to chop it out and replace. So that's exactly what we do. Before we chop anything out, guys, make your template. Before anything gets modified, touched as far as removal, go ahead and get yourself a template if you are going to have to remake that piece because everything fits perfectly at the moment. Before you start messing with it, it's just much easier to do it that way. So uh, just quick little top tip, make your template before you start cutting and then uh, you will have a much better outcome in the end. Just my personal experience. Although the rust underneath that piece wasn't all too bad, although it is still rusty, so happy we're under there. The main purpose purpose was just to replace it because the uh, the metal itself was just thin, it was pitted, it was gross, it really wasn't anything to be happy to uh, to weld something new onto. So it was an easy enough piece to remake. Now you guys can see all the pieces that I actually removed just in this area alone, just to get access to everything I need. So you guys can see all those spot welds were drilled out. Just takes a lot of time, man. You gotta be careful with it. You don't wanna mess things up. You do not wanna create more work for yourself, which is very easy to do when you're doing this kind of stuff. So please don't just jump into big projects like this, guys, unless you kind of dip your toes in first because sometimes you'll learn something that you really weren't even thinking about and uh, you'll realize, okay, this is how we make it better. This is how we be better. Moving along, however, next stop was just to clean up this whole area to get rid of all the Raptor liner. If you guys are aware, not a fan of this product. If you guys are curious to see what product I will be using, stick around, it's coming soon. So now that we're back to bare metal in this area, I immediately noticed that this spot down here in the bottom door hinge needed some addressing. The actual metal itself from the backside wasn't too bad, but on the front, very pitted, very corroded, was not going to fly. So quick template, quick replacement, go ahead and get it welded in, good as new. My bad for bouncing around all over on this car, but now at the moment I just was focusing on the cowl which required to remove the actual wiper stalks and the assembly itself. Very, very difficult. All the studs were just spinning and broken out of the actual plastic enclosure, so I had to cut the nuts and studs off. So I'll be having to source myself a second-hand wiper arm unit, unless you guys out there maybe have one that I can buy from you. I would uh, very much so need it. <laughs> I can repair the one I have, but let's be real, there's really no point. It's probably a fairly simple and cheap part to replace. So now next up, I'm actually just getting the cowl cleaned up because I actually ran out of my welding gas bottle again. So, so now basically I'm just at a point where I'm cleaning things up and um, just kind of seeing what we have to work with. I know these drip rails for the windshield were pretty rough, so now taking a good look at what we have to work with inside uh, gives me a good idea and actually we found out that this side that I'm currently working on, the passenger side or the left side of the vehicle, 
needs a bit of a patch. You guys will see in just a moment, the rust was so bad, unfortunately, that uh, it caused a bit of corrosion. So we're gonna have to go ahead and address that. You guys will see those two spots right here. No welding gas I'm forced to just bounce around even more I actually now am at a point where I know a lot of you guys are gonna be happy to see this monstrosity gone and leaving our lives <laughs> so this patch on the floor guys was done just as a quick temporary thing I just wanted to basically just patch the floor up as quickly as I could and I'll be honest I probably tried the best that I could at that point in time but it's just crazy to see like my skills grow I would have never put something like that into this car at this point in my life you know it's just wild but uh, we'll go ahead and make ourselves a beautiful recreation of the floor I actually did that so I could get the actual floor flange which you maybe saw on the right side of the rocker itself in place that way I can get that installed and uh, moving right along to get the floor complete but welder is back in our possession you guys can see we are now welding things back up so that replacement piece for the drip rail came out absolutely perfect you guys see it you guys already know the repairs on this car man they're just so good they're just so good everything makes me so excited if i do something and i'm not too stoked with it i will literally redo it sometimes i'll film it sometimes i won't it just depends on the mood i'm in in that day you know what i'm saying some days guys i literally just don't even want to say speak talk to the camera i'm just out there working getting my stuff done so So at the moment I'm just making my final clearances for the uh, remainder of the floor and uh, to do that I just basically have to make some clearances and chop some bits out so we can put our new parts in. Now thankfully we've got a welder so you guys know we can finally make some progress back on this area. Clico clips guys, Clico clips are your best friends. Drill the guide pins, the guide holes prior to removing the part and then that way when you go ahead and install it as you guys can see it all fully welded up right now looking oh man like just take a look at that. Everything, guys, everything on this car is just looking so damn good. Look at how beautiful that is. That rocker tie-in right there looks so good. All the rust that was hiding up on this, the wiper cowl, look at it. It's just beautiful. Everything is brand new, rust-free. Guys, look at the tie-in. I welded and dressed everything for the rocker panel. The trunk itself is ready for some primer. The trunk, the I'm sorry, the boot floor. Apologize for my overseas viewers, the boot floor. And also I just want to give a huge shout out to any of you guys that followed and watched along on the live stream that I had a few days ago of us talking some primer on the GTR. It was a big moment. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and let's check out some of the progress and see the fruits of our labor. It's, uh, it's been a journey, you know what I mean? I'll, part of me at some points never even thought I would get to this point. I, part of me thought I would give up, and I know a lot of you guys probably never thought I would reach this point or even come close to uh, getting here to this stage. But here we are. It's... Uh, it's really hard to describe the feeling, and, and I know I say this probably every single video, but man, it's, um, 
it's pretty, it's pretty incredible, you know? It's pretty cool. It's one of those things where, I don't know, it's tough to explain because yeah, there are moments and it's not enjoyable at times and t there's days where I just don't want to do any sort of work on it or touch it. And that's okay, like that's okay. But, you know, the constant, the constant chipping away at like the progress it's been cool to see. And now with this little whole pocket area, just, just, you know, it's just primer and it's just this small little spot right here, but it just, it just feels good to see that, you know, it feels good. It's so clean. It's rust free. Like it's, it's, it's beautiful. Like it's as good as it can be. Uh, epoxy primer, like this is going to last for a long, long, long time, much longer than originally was built for. So I'm very happy about that. I also have a pretty big announcement that I would like to uh, share with you guys. So I kind of been thinking about this for a long time and part of me was like, okay, setting a deadline or like a build completion date really might not be like the smartest thing. Cause obviously I don't want to rush things. I don't want to take shortcuts and this and that, but maybe it wouldn't hurt, right? Just to have some sort of a goal, some sort of a, just a, just a, just, just, just something to kind of reach for and strive for and accomplish. Ours day, 2024. Now, as far as I'm aware, it's probably gonna, it's probably gonna be in uh, November. Now, I've been thinking about this for a couple weeks, couple maybe a, maybe a month or two now. But yeah, that's kind of my thought process. You know, I just it'd be really cool. And then here's the big thing. Here's a little cherry on top. I want to drive this to Ours Day. As you guys know, I'm currently located in New York. Ours Day is located in California. Now, will I still be living in New York? come uh, you know November next year who knows anything's possible but the goal is to drive the car full out all the way from here to there for ours day um, let me know what you guys think about that if that's a, a silly thought or if that's kind of like a good idea I know some of you guys are probably looking at this like man this is gonna take a years and years to finish I don't think so I don't think so you know I don't think so when I first got the car and first started to dive into the build you guys have to understand like at that point, my focus was not this car. My focus was the business, was my shop. So uh, I wasn't really able to put nearly any time. I did chip away a little bit, but I took months and months and months off, like six months at a time sometimes, and I didn't even touch the car. So you have to think, now Now I'm kind of like getting back into it and I just wanna knock it out. So that's kind of why I'm um, you know, making good progress now and kind of see where I think I'll need as far as time-wise to uh, get it done. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Let me know what you guys think about that. That's pretty exciting, I think. It's pretty cool. But yeah, all in all, I don't wanna hold you guys for too much longer. I appreciate you guys for sticking around till the end. If you guys are still here, let me know. Um, you know, say what's up in the comments. Let me know what you guys are driving, what you're working on, where you're from, how long you guys been watching. I know some of you guys have been watching for a long time and I appreciate that. Now some of you guys are new, so that's super cool. But yeah, I mean, man, man, you know what I mean? It's good. It's really good. Just everything, you know what I mean? So much work has gone into it. It's, uh, I love it. It's, uh, it's really cool. But I think that's going to be it for today. Appreciate you guys watching. And as always, throw a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you have not already. Throw notifications on if you guys care to do so because man, only like 10% of my views, uh, I can see that, come from like notifications. And it's weird because YouTube is pretty strange about that. They'll be like, okay, even though you turn the bell on, you didn't have to go and like in the settings of the bell, you don't have to choose like notify all or only sometimes. Like what, that makes no sense. Why, do they make, why does YouTube make it hard for people to get views? You would think YouTube would want everyone to get like the most views, right? like make it easy for everyone. Anyway, I'm thinking too hard. Hope you guys have a great day, rest of your evening, whatever it may be. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one, later.